Hey! Welcome to our replay analysis again, where we're looking at another Protoss here versus a Terran. PVT. We're gonna help Sir Gamer more figure out what's going right, what's going wrong, what's he doing, what does he need to be doing. Figure figure out all the things. So so far, you're doing fine. I love your pylon placement. I didn't like it at first a little bit, but now you fixed it, and I love it. So far, A+. Plus. Also, all but one of your close patches are stacked. Now you get an A-. minus. You got three out of four, and a good pylon placement, so A- minus so far. Your That patch should be stacked, by the way. Gateway, where's it going to go? Ah, good shit. Nice placement on the gateway. I would have accepted either behind or in front. I think in front is a little bit better because you limit area that a Reaper can hit your probe room on the outside. So I love your gateway placement. I like your gas as well. And your Chrono Boost is good. Yeah, your build looks pretty good so far. So far. So the first minute, you get it, you still you're at an A. A plus. Like, not A plus, but A minus. You fucked up the patch a little bit. <coughs> Give you an A for an opener. Are you scouting? I like it. Uh, Nexus. I like it. You scout a Rax and a Depot. Okay. Uh, I hope you check the gas. You do? Okay, this is huge. I hope you click it and you check it. Do you, let me see if you actually check that. I want to see if you check this. If you don't check it, it's not the end of the world, but I just want to see if you actually do. I want to see if you do. You do not. It's not the end of the world. It's not like, oh my god, you should be checking that so badly. It just will give you more info if you did, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. And again, anyone who doesn't know, this is Diamond League. So just, just throwing it out there. I don't know if I said that already, but this is Diamond League. I feel like I skipped that. It'll be in the title of the video anyways for YouTube. The reason why it's relevant to check it. So you can also now I would say you can confirm what it is anyways. Even if you don't check what it is, you can confirm what it is now based on how much time has passed. Here's here's how this works, okay? Let me let me tell you. So you got to his base right as his Rax was done. And you know when his Rax is going to finish as well because it's paired with your gateway, pretty much. So it's pretty much on point. Like your gateway just finished and his Rax is just finishing. And if you don't know this, you should know this. A Marine's build time is 18 seconds and a Reaper's build time is 32. So if we're going to just kind of make it really easy peasy here... Let's use 130 as a number instead of trying to do math with eights here, which is it's not that hard, but whatever. If we do uh, 18 plus 130, that's going to be 148, right? So if this, if a marine has not popped out of the of the racks by about 148, you know he went reaper first, which means he paired a gas with the racks, because nobody goes early ass gas and makes a reaper normally anyways. It doesn't make fucking sense. That's generally going to be like an expand build essentially. Like, if they're, they're going to go double gas, that's a different story, right? But one like one gas racks, op standard opener type thing, if they're going to make a Reaper, they're probably going to make the gas as they make the racks so that it's minimal investment to still get a Reaper at the right time and allows them to have a natural really fast. It's a standard gameplay. It's like standard style. It happens probably like 80% of the time. Super, super, super often. Now, if he didn't make a Reaper, which is going to pop out 32 seconds after, so the Reaper should be popping out right about two minutes... But if he makes a Marine instead, he might be going Fast Factory. And you'd have to be worried about that. Like, there could be like, oh, shit. He doesn't have... Uh, like, like, he's not investing into a Reaper. So maybe if I click that gas, it would be say like, oh, he's already got 80 mined by the time the Rax is going to be done. Because he took it early. Because he might be going Factory. Yo, Pig, thank you for the fucking raid, dude. Much love, man. And a welcome, everybody, from Pigstream. Uh, I already know you guys. You guys are fucking great. You guys are amazing. You guys smell good, too. He's, he's such a handsome bunch. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm doing a replay analysis right now for a viewer. So I'm going to be doing a lot of, like, 
critiquing his gameplay. We're, we're doing a diamond level Perdos perspective replay analysis. So I'm helping him get better at the game. And uh, yeah, welcome guys. Happy to have you. What up? Hope Pig, hope you had a good stream. And uh, yeah, much love, man. All right, so yeah, that's that. Uh, sorry, more. That would be like the the differences, right, of the gas. So again, if you click the gas, you can confirm what it is before you even see the Reaper. But if you don't click the gas, you can probably confirm what it is once you see the. If you get stuck in his base like you did, once you get killed by whatever comes out of the racks. So a, re a marine should be popping out of the racks, like in about three, two, one. No marine. So if there's no marine, you know for a fact. Okay, there's a Reaper coming. Because it's too late for a read now. And you can do whatever you want to do to make preps for this. Like, there's options you have, right? Like, what if you're the kind of guy that's like, I want to make a shield battery. And I want to attack with my Adept really fast. You could do that. And a shield battery would make sense. Because there is a Reaper. Or if you're the kind of guy that's like, I want to attack with an Adept. But if you made a shield battery and there's no Reaper, it would make literally no sense. Right? So, because you'd be making a shield battery for no reason at that point in time. So, it's... Kind of, it just gives, it makes you have more understanding about, like, it gives you more of a well-defined, like, reaction to what you can do. Uh, do you have to attack with an Adept? No, you don't have to do that. It's just, just saying, in general, like, that's just a hypothetical, right? That would make sense whether you do or don't build a battery as a response to this. But now you can tell it's going to be a Reaper, as we said. And he even shows you the command center, which is super nice, because now you don't have to question whatever is going to be happening here. <laughs> you know he's expanding, for sure. Because you've confirmed it. <coughs> so standard play is totally fine. I mean, yeah. So chrono boost, good job. I like your chrono boost on your gateway. That council is fucking fast. This is a super fast council. I recommend not building your council this fast unless you're literally going to go DTs. That is so fast. And if you're going to make a council this fast... I highly recommend you put your pylon actually on the cliff. You're, this is so fast. Like, I feel like it would be in your best interest to hide this if you're going to build this this fast. Because the only build I feel like this would make sense with is DTs. Like, it's too fast for a macro build for, like, Stalker or something. Because look at how, look at how it's finishing, right? Look how it finishes. You don't even have enough gas to get blink. And if you do get blink, you can't even make a unit off your gateway. Like you're, you're halting production to get really fast upgrade if that's what you're going to do. And you're going blink. And now you can't make stalkers. So you're going to have blink really fast and not enough stalkers to do anything with it. So way too fucking fast if you're going to do a blink. What you should do, in my opinion, it's not too much later, but... What you should do is you make your first unit, and in the time of when you're producing your second unit, you can throw down a uh, council. Like, like let's say your first stalker pops out, and let's say you make a sentry or a stalker again or whatever. <coughs> or two adepts. I don't give a shit what you make. You make two units around the time when your second unit is, like, between 50% to, like, 80% of the way done. So, like, when it's almost done. Like, halfway to almost done. That's when you'll have enough money to spare... To still make your third unit in the gateway. And also keep t keep making probes in your nexus. Keep making pylons so you don't block. And also afford a gateway and a core then. It's just too early the way you did it. It's, you, it's too much cost. I'm here. And now he scouts it as well. So he has probably some type, type of a, an idea what you're doing. He knows you're not going to Stargate. He knows you're not going for a robo really fast I don't like your battery placement either this battery is actually not good uh, your battery should be literally a little bit like don't block the mineral line with it you don't have to but put it closer to your mineral line because you are so susceptible to Hellion run by which you don't need to be because you're not you're not putting a battery or sorry you're not putting a wall in front of your base which is one reason why you're susceptible to Hellions and the second reason why is because even if Hellions do get in your base the beautiful thing about having a battery near your mineral line <coughs> is if you kill one of the three, if you basically lower the number from three, if it's like lower than three, if it's two or one, you'll never lose a probe because you'll you, ideally you'll kill the Hellions before the battery runs out of energy 
and the Hellions will actually get the damage of the probes will get healed through. It'll, your battery will heal through it substantially. Like you might lose a probe to the to the overkill damage if two Hellions focus fire a probe repeatedly. They'll always penetrate the shield and do a little bit of damage to it. But you'll definitely lose maybe like zero probes, one probe, maybe two, instead of losing eight or something like that because you have a battery way out of range. So this is not ideal. And it's it, like a battery here as well would be totally fine against like a bio push with like stim pack or some shit like that. Doesn't really matter. Just yeah, weird placement on that. For sure. <laughs> okay. So you're moving across the map. By the way, you're Reaper. Or sorry, you're Adept. Don't ever do it like this. You kind of missed your timing. Uh, this will never do anything, by the way. Uh, I didn't mind that you moved. The, I don't mind that you moved it across the map, but I didn't think you were gonna do this with it. So, here's a tip to all Protoss players out there. If you've ever wondered why, when you watch a player do damage with an adept, why it actually does damage, like if you're watching like a tournament or some shit, the only reason why is because the players that do damage with the Reaper usually do something like move out with their first adept right away. They run across the map with it like immediately. They don't even try to zone out the Reaper with it most of the time. They'll maybe make like a battery in their mineral line to be like, well, if you attack me, a battery stops you. And if you don't deal with my Reaper, or sorry, if you don't deal, yeah. If you skip my Reaper, I'll, or, okay, I'm saying it backwards. You make a battery to deal with the Reaper so you don't lose probes. And while the Reaper's attacking your base, you can overpower their base because they have less shit defending it, essentially. That's all it really is. And it puts SCVs in a compromising position as well. If he even at all delays the bunker. So it it it, would, it needs to go immediately out of the racks or out of the gate to like his base right away. And if you don't do that, it would still be okay if you waited for like two adepts and then you wanted to like maybe shade past the bunker. But that's a little scarier because it depends what kind of build he's going for. Some builds would zone it out and kill it. And some builds, like maybe it's like a fast starport, might struggle with it a little more. But... Straight up, long story short, if you don't want to do the early adept attack where you run right to his base right away, you should genuinely stay outside of his base with your adept and just use the shade as a scout. Don't let it finish and send it in. Because if you do, it will just die. And you're just going to throw an adept in the trash. And there's no reason to do that. You lose your scout, that can continue to scout for you, so that's a big deal. Because you can keep repeatedly checking his composition. And if he is, if he fucks it up at all, you can scout his entire tech path if he lets you into his base. And you could also maybe kill some SVs while you do that then, and that would be super good. But at the very least, you could scout how early he takes gas, how, what his SV count keeps looking like. You could scout his doorway and add-ons. If he builds two other, uh, build other buildings too close, you could scout his tech advancement. Like, is he going three racks? Is he going for a factory with Hellions? What the hell is he doing? You can scout so much with this just by repeatedly doing it for like a full minute. Two bunkers is a huge sign, by the way. That's so fucking defensive. This guy is paranoid as shit. And you killed nothing there, and you died. You, like, made him move off one guy off a of mineral line, and then you died. So not ideal. But at least you scouted, uh, like... Yeah, you didn't really scout shit, to me. That was the first one. For a second, I thought your adept got there and saw a third CC, but you didn't see... I was like, is that the old one you saw, though? Yeah, you scouted nothing. You scouted the double bunker. One bunker is standard, by the way. Two bunkers is a little excessive. But it's not the end of the world for Terran. It's not like, oh my god, this changes everything. It's He's playing a little defensive. So I feel like if you were to think about this, it would probably make more sense if he's going to go for a, th a second bunker that he probably either has a third command center or really fast tech in some shape or way, shape, or form. And the way it would make sense now for this, if you had to pick between one of those two options, it would probably make more sense that he has a third command center. And the reason why... It's because he killed you with Marauders, and he doesn't even have gas here. So he can't really go crazy tech if he's using gas for Marauders and he's not exploding gas. So his gas is very limited, is what that would mean. So he can't have, like, double port and battle cruisers or some shit going in his base with, like, Marines and Bunkers. So you, you could kind of already assume what he's doing by what he's showing you, to a degree. And you, back on your base, you got you got your Stalkers... <coughs> and this is another thing too. As soon as you get blink, 
ideally, you want to be probably like doing something with it. So this is also why I would say if you don't want to get a really fast robo, it may actually make, and that's fine. You don't have to get a really fast robo, by the way. It does make a lot of sense to get a really fast sentry, like a sentry second, because a sentry second is really good at giving you like guardian shield when you get attacked by like stim pushes with a with shield battery. It makes it really easy. But what it also allows you to do is it allows you to make a hallucinated phoenix that can fly to the edge of his cliff and you can blink into his base. And it also scouts in ahead of you to go, is this going to be okay to blink or is it a bad idea? <coughs> so you really need to, because otherwise you got a bunker in your face. And what and the, the question would be, why the fuck did you get blink so fast? You're just going to walk into a bunker and walk away. You're clearly not all inning. So it's just, yeah, it reinforces the fact that your, your council is too fast because you're getting blink so fucking fast and you're just sitting on it doing nothing. And you're not scouting his build at all either. And here, another problem I would say is your pylon placement. You need to put pylons a little bit more towards the edge of your base. Because your stalkers are not even in, in a position where you can punish a drop. Which could be happening now. So if you had a, if you had stalkers like in the middle. And you had a pylon there. And you had a pylon like there. And a pylon like there. You could spot a drop coming towards your base on either side. And you could easily run. Don't blink first. Run at it. And once you're in range to blink under it and then shoot it, you then blink. You don't want to blink early and not, and not have blink ready when you're there. Because he'll see you on the edge of his vision. And if he's fast, he'll turn around and get away before you can blink again. So you want to blink right as you're as he's about to see you. So that as soon as he sees you, he doesn't see that you walking at him. He sees you blinking under him. And he's like, oh, fuck. Well, my medevac might die now. And it makes it really easy to zone out defense. So you can use it defensively or you can use it aggressively either way. It's it's but if you, either way it's too early is one it's also again we'll reinforce that statement because you need to understand that for sure uh, it fucks your whole build up but yeah you need some vision dude this is so scary that you don't have any vision because you didn't scout if he's going widow mines or not and you have no vision at all of your edge of your base if the drop comes in until like the last second when it's like in range of your probes already okay that pylon is fine. You need to make another one like right there. You still have no vision on the right side. I like that you're doing it though, but do it more of a, yeah, you're running away now. This is it's still bad. I do like the effort though. You have the right idea. You just need to fix it a little bit more. If you're going to play this greedy. Okay, this base. If you expand right now, way too fucking early. And the reason why this is way too early. You haven't scouted a single fucking thing. This is why you really need a sentry as well. Because you don't even know what build this guy's going for. If this guy was going for a two re two command center, like five racks factory starport fucking flood, and he pushes you and he never stops pushing you, you die if you try to defend that with four gateways. And that's it. Like, you're just going to die. So, you have no idea what he's doing. Third base already is greedy against the two base all-in. That's already on the greedy side. Four base greed against the two base all-in is you're on the dead side. Versus a player who's as good as you are. So, you definitely need to scout. I'm so scared for you right now. You have no... You're not blinking at all with vision aggressively in any way. And you're also not scouting at all. So... Another thing to note is, is again, the scout, if you scout something that is not a medevac based build, it again gives you an option to blink into his base like we already talked about, but it also gives you an option to be aggressive and not have the fear of being like, well, he's going to drop me really fast with a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, and you could be aggressive at the front of his base, and you actually can do things like punch his bunker if he's ready here, and you're like, he's got a bunch of units sitting there, hit his bunker. And blink back stalkers one by one as they take damage to the bunker. And you can make him pull SCVs off the middle line. You might kill a bunker. You make him feel contained. And you also don't let him have a third. If this guy has a third right now, why? Like, why What? Why are you not stopping this? This is so exposed. Why are you not stopping this third with your stalkers? He just took it. Because he just felt like it. And there's nothing defending it. You could easily have made this go, Oh, let's go back to the main, guys. And let's wait for Stimpak. Which he actually does have now. So you'd have to blink away anyways, but 
you need to fucking see this, though. So the fact that you're going for a fourth actually is okay, but you're doing it in a way that you're just going, please let this work. Not, I know this will work. You have It's so risky the way you're doing it because you're not scouting a single thing. But it will work, though. It should work because he's going for a third. Now he's got a sensor tower that kind of reveals that he's going for a third because you don't really want to make a sensor tower if you're going to go all in because it's so expensive. And he made it also right next to the third base. You can tell by the center of the radius of the circle, it's like right there, right? It's right in the middle of next to the third. So that's probably covering the third because he expanded there. So you can already assume he expanded there now. You should still confirm it though. That don't just assume shit all the time, even though that is a good assumption. You still need to confirm shit just to be extra safe. And you should have confirmed it before the sensor tower existed to be fair. Because you should have been roaming his base a bit more than you are. That's the power of Blink. The power of Blink is absolute defense early game versus really fast pressure builds. And containing your opponent for as long as possible. Because you can always retreat and not get punished for it. <coughs> I don't like your cannons. I don't like that at all. I would much rather that be two more gateways right now. Same cost. Uh, cannons don't make sense. I don't like these cannons either. Lazy ass defense is what this is. That's four gateways you could have made instead. You're playing a semi low gas style with high minerals by how fast you're expanding. Making cannons, what would you do if you make a bunch of cannons at your third and fourth and he doom drops your main base right there? Those cannons do effectively nothing. What would you do if he drops the back of your third or your, your fourth over here away from the cannons? And he drops the back of your third over here away from the cannons. You're going to use your army to defend it and your cannons do nothing. Again. So cannons at certain points in time are effective. But right now, not the time to be making cannons. This is absolutely the time to be making more gateways to increase your army size faster. So that you can defend all of your bases mobily with an army. And you're the, you are actually really strong right now if you just rely on charge lot stalker for the most part. Because you have a lot of expansions already really fast. And you could you even got Storm. So you have Charge Lot Stalker Templar you could totally have. You don't even need to go Mass Templar either. We're talking like literally 3, 2, 4. Not 12 or 16. Just a couple. So that you can throw... like All it takes is one good Storm in the center of his bio. And the, Stark, the Stalker Zealot just clean house. So... Uh, you should be relying on those things, the first options you gave yourself, a lot more than cannons. This is way too early for cannons. About the only time I would ever tell you making cannons would make sense is if you were playing a Terran player that had already, by eight minutes, dropped you with two drops of Widow Mines, and he just keeps doing it. He's like, I'm going to keep going Widow Mine drops, and Widow Mine drops, and Widow Mine drops, and Widow Mine drops. And you're like, fuck these Widow Mines. I'm just going to put a cannon in every mineral line. So that every time he drops me with Widow Mines again, the cannon will just clean it up over time. And I can just run the probes away and come back. And then my stalkers can also try to help here and there. And the cannon gives detection too. So if my, pro my probe and observer never have a chance to like overlap and my observers die or some shit like that. That'd be like the only time I would accept you making cannons versus a Terran like this. If you're being this greedy. If he's just being really Widow Mine heavy. <coughs> but you don't even need cannons then either if you're just really good at multitasking your uh, defensive micro. You really don't. You can actually have like multi-observer, multi-stalker defense on two sides. Your army is actually surprisingly low though for what you're doing. And you're making more battery cannon in your main now. You're so distatic heavy. This is really bad. This could have been six fucking gates. This is, again... That's eight gates. You have so many cannons. You have eight fucking photon cannons in your base right now. This is the shit. You, if I saw you doing this, I would literally tell myself, I already won the game. Like, I would, like, I'm obviously, I'm fucking not Diamond 3 or whatever. But this is such a weak, it's a sign of fucking, like, basically what you're doing is you're showing a sign of weakness. I would say, with doing this. I'm not even kidding. Because you're doing exactly what you're saying you're doing. I'm lazy. So I'm going to make cannons. Your army is already defensive anyways. Fucking spread it out. Put it around your base. 
Put some, put like a couple pylon scouts in front of your base. Put a zealot out there. Put a, a fucking hallucinated phoenix, like I said before. Go scout him. Figure out where he is on the map. That way you can spread out when he's going to harass you and you can group up when he's going to push you. The fact that you just make cannons and go, they'll probably deal with it. That's fucking terrible because you're you're overlapping. You're like double dipping your defense anyways. You're slowing down how fast you make an army to be defensive with your army because you want to make cannons instead because you don't feel like micro your army. Like you're, you're literally just going to max out slower and it's going to take away all aggressive potential from you. And if your opponent sees this kind of shit, he can still find gaps in your defense like there, for instance, and there, for instance. Those are two gaps in your base that still exist that eight cannons haven't covered yet. So you're going to make 10 cannons, 12 cannons, 14 cannons. You can't cover everything with cannons if you have this many bases this fast at all. And if this guy realizes what you're doing, like I said, he can still harass you or he can just expand faster against you because he's like, well, this guy is so defensive. You're doing the same thing he's doing with multi-bunker. You're slowing yourself down for extra static D that you don't need. Like, if this guy was here right now with a, a Stimpak bio army, like, let's say it was like 15 Marauders and 30 Marines and 8 Medivacs, he would run over your cannons and your battery before you even got down there to defend it. Because you have no vision of this. And your cannons would kill, like, two Marines and die. Or they would hit a Marauder and they would get healed by the Medivac and then the cannons would die. It would do actually nothing. And you've stopped making probes now. Why have you stopped making probes? What is the what is the cutoff of 67 represent? And now you've started making probes again. How long did you cut your probes for right there? You stop making probes. This is your last probes that you made right here. These last three because you went to 67. So you made these probes six seconds ago. You stopped making probes at 7.55. 7.55. The only time in StarCraft 2 would ever make sense to cut probes is if you're going to do a timing. And you're like, well, I physically can't afford any more probes in my build right now because I'm going to be tapping myself to the fucking brim here on what my bank is to make units to attack my opponent with. I'm doing a timing attack. I'm doing a all-in or some shit like that if it's lower economy. Like, you basically are going to... 100% utilize what you have on army for the next foreseeable future of the game to maximize your attack. If you're not doing that, cutting probes just sucks ass. And you cut probe again. 755 is the last time you made a probe. It's the last time you started a probe. And the next time you start a probe... You're getting so crazy on the cannons instead. Your like, mindset is all on the cannons right now. You still haven't made a probe. It's been a minute since you made a probe. On four Nexus. Over a minute. I'm speeding it up a little bit. You just started probes at 9.19. 7.48. Or, oh, sorry, 7.55. 7.55 was the last time you made a probe. And you didn't make another one until 9.19. That is a shitload of time that has gone by that you have not even touched making probes. You can't do shit like that and expect to win going for armies like this. This kind of an army needs to be maintained a bit better with your economy. Like, this army has nothing to do with micro. Literally, this is micro-less. This is fucking easiest, micro, uh, easiest army to micro in the world. You just A-move and you blink forward and you just watch shit attack stuff. You can micro it a little bit if you get really good at it. You can, like, spread zillas out against widow mines. You can flank and shit. You can, like, bait widow mines into charge lots. Uh, like, and put them into the bio. You can focus fire medivacs. Whatever. But you don't have to do any of that, literally. You can genuinely go A move, blink forward, A move again. Like, when your stalkers start getting falling behind, blink it forward and have them A move behind the zealots. And then you just watch your shit kill shit. It could be literally that simple. And if it's that simple... It means that this kind of a build is a it's only it's a build that will only work if you have more supply than your opponent. And the fact that you have less supply than your opponent means this build already sucks now. What does your opponent have in terms of a composition? Marine, Marauder, Medivac, 
siege tank. He doesn't have a lot of tanks, though. He's got, like, the one. Ba basically, Marine Marauder Medivac, okay? And Marine Marauder Medivac versus Mass Charge Lot Stalker, there is a tipping point where Charge Lot Stalker wins against Marine Marauder Medivac. It's when there's less supply overall. And the reason why that works is because less supply overall means less dense bio balls that kill zealots slower because it's not as many bio units stacked at a spot, which allows zealots to get more surface area because they all charge around and get surface area. And then the zealots perform better that way because the zealots are allowed to connect and then connect and then connect and then connect. But when the bio ball gets really big, what happens is, is there's so much of a dense bio ball that the bio actually deletes the zealots as they start charging in and the zealots replace each other as zealots in the front die faster. So they don't connect as much of a radius anymore. They don't get as much surface area anymore because they literally connect to the same spot that the previous zealot just died at because they, they're getting picked off faster because the bio ball is denser. It's, it's a ranged army and they're all focus firing the same front line. So it's a denser army that deletes zealots as they engage. So but what this means, long story short, Lower supply, zealot versus bio, zealots do better. Higher supply, zealot versus bio, bio does better. So the only way you're going to win a situation like this now is if you get a fucking clutch storm to, like, delete a lot of the bio and then zealots overwhelm again. It's the only way this is going to work out for you. Because the fact that you're behind going charge lot stalker is really bad. You're, you're behind when you're going brute force. Like... You have less gas invested. You don't even have gas at your third. I don't even know why you took it. You don't have gas at your third. You don't have gas at your fourth. I'm okay with it if you're going mass zealots. Okay? You do have gas at your national, gas at your main. Your opponent has gas at every single base. And yet, he has more supply than you overall. And the reason why... It does, like, if you're just throwing it out there again. If you mine gas, all units that cost gas make your supply develop slower. Because there's more expenses and more time investments that you have to put into gas-based things. If you're making tanks, or you're making medevacs, or you're making fucking Colossus, you're making Void Rays, you're, whatever unit you're making that costs gas that is not a fucking Zealot, or a Marine, or something, or a, or a Marauder, which is a bar you're not making barracks-based units, essentially. It makes supply develop slower, because you're not massing. But you're not massing either, because you're making cannons everywhere. Like, it, your build just is literally not optimal is again what we've come to the conclusion of here it's really not and you haven't made a single high templar you made this council or sorry the temple archives about three minutes ago or like two and a half minutes ago and you got storm super fast and since you got it you have not made one high templar you have zero high templars in the game right now so what I would argue is, is it worth it to get gas at your natural, to get the Templar Archives tech additional to it, to then make Templars with it, to not make any Templar? Because obviously, no, it's not. You'd be better off not saturating this gas at all, saturating your third faster, not building that gas at all, saturating your fourth faster, building a fifth base faster, building a lot of gateways with all of this, making mass fucking zealots if you're going to go for a build that is literally just zealot stalker. You could genuinely... Like, I've done this before to Terran before as well. And I, I'm not going to say it's the best build in the world. But I have killed Terrans that are, you know, 5.4, 5.5 KMMR with genuinely two gases only. Because you have, like, 90 probes and 84 of them mine minerals and six of them mine gas. And the only reason why you need six mining gas is to make your initial round of stalkers that should never die because they always follow zealots. And then you make your upgrades. Charge, blink, and forge upgrades. And then all you're doing is going, like, with 20 gateways. Like, zealot rapid-fire weapons. Zealot rapid-fire weapons. Zealot rapid-fire weapons. Zealot rapid-fire weapons. And the only reason why it works is because you always maintain more supply than Terran. If Terran ever matches your supply, you're fucked. You're, oh, well, I got mass zealots, and he's got a lot of bio, and widow mines, and whatever. I'm dead. But if you're like, oh, I have 180 supply, and he's got 140, well, guess what? That's what it should be. You have a chance to swarm him now and overwhelm him and crush him. That's how that build works. So you're slowing yourself down for no gain with no Templar. So your build now is super fucking slow. Like it's just 
I'm going to watch you just run into him and die. You're going to just run in and die. <coughs> there he is. You see him coming. With an observer. Nice catch over there. Okay, Terran's starting to kite you. You A moved like half your army and you let other half, like a lot of zealots just come over here and just die. So you're also, not only are you under his supply already, but you're bleeding out your zealots for no reason. You're, you're like, you're, you're losing zealots on the engage to not engage with it. You can't do that. It literally, you have to overwhelm him to engage properly. And you just took away half your zealots to not even engage. So now your next engagement is going to be substantially smaller. The only chance you have of winning this game now is if you land a storm. Which you should have enough energy for right now, which you do. If you land a storm, you might reset yourself a little bit here and give yourself some breathing room. This Terran, though, hitting you on this side is doing a good job. This is what he should be doing. This is how you can punish a Perdas who's playing so mineral heavy with mostly Zealots. If he breaks your economy, he fucks you really bad because you're being so wasteful, essentially. Because Zealots are not super cost efficient. They're more like a hammer you hit over the head with your opponent. So, yeah, the storm here could save you in this particular fight, but you're still taking damage. And you have you do have storm. And you're distracted by the main right now, so you're letting your third die. So you pri I feel like right there you prioritized the lesser fight. Never do never ever ever do that. Like your main's getting attacked. You go to the main and you're like, all right, tough guy. Your 10 supply wants to fuck with me? Let's fuck around. And you even you even killed the fucking marines there. And you still are fixated on two supply of marines. You're like, I really want to save that disruptor. Meanwhile, my whole base is dying. <laughs> right? Like... If you want to take a brief moment to come back and make a unit, throw a disruptor shot at this bio right there, I'm okay with that. And you know what's funny? What did your two cannons do? Your two cannons were like, um, hey, uh, Jimmy, you want to get on the phone and tell the, tell the, the chancellor or what, tell the Templar commander, whatever the fuck, what do you call Proto? Like, tell the Kala. Let's get on the phone with the Kala and tell them. Yeah, so a medevac just flew by both of us. We are out of range. Just want to let you know the main is compromised. <laughs> All right, yeah, good luck. <laughs> good investment. <laughs> uh, real, good, real good investment. Nice shield battery to back it up. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, if you want to... If you want to, like, deal with... This right here, again, you can deal with it for like all of about two seconds max. One second, ideally. Just quick, like, make a unit, call it a day. Because if you make more supply than what he has here, you're going to win anyways. It's going to be a fucking easy peasy cakewalk. And focus on this. This is the main fight. This is what you need to actually pay attention to. Because if you disregard this, and this kills that, you insta-die. You have to fixate mostly micro, like attentive, de attentive detail to the big fight. You need to, that's your primary focus. You can still look somewhere else for a split second, but if you have like, if you have, if you're going to spend the next eight seconds microing, literally it should be a seven, one split, one second dealing with the harass, seven seconds dealing with the main fight. Not the other way around. Not one second dealing with the main fight and seven seconds trying to chase marines in a medevac around and landed a shutter shot on six marines because you kill six supply and lose 60 supply at the same time and then you're dead so definitely make sure you're prioritizing your time right and you still haven't stormed yeah, there we go also you're trying to micro disruptors and storm at the same time and I feel like you probably botched it right there because you're you're literally select all army microing here and you're like all right well 
Okay, I gotta hit tab, get the right fucking unit. Okay, okay, I gotta go there, I gotta click this guy, I gotta get that guy. Green box, I'll just click it on the screen. Like, it's just fucking sloppy. You don't need to make it as a... Uh... I mean, to be fair, what you're actually doing? You have select all army for your whole army, which is controlling everything. Templar and Disruptor included, and then you put Templar on one, and you put Disruptor on two. So you're like, Templar one, go forward and storm. Disruptor two, go forward and throw your Nova. Which is fine. <coughs> but, like, I would rather, I would actually rather you just have Templar on one and everything on two. Everything else. Like, hit everything on two, and then I'll, when you hit two, go control Templar, control click your Templar, and go alt one. Or something, and now your Templars are on one by themselves, and all your rest of your stalkers and zealots and all that shit is on two. Five, turn down your weird background noises. No, it's my filler. I need it. It's uh, it's it's weird if it's silent behind me. I need that filler. It's it's amazing. Just just close your eyes and visualize uh, something that your your deepest darkest desires, and uh, you'll understand the music. Uh, but yeah, gotta, gotta definitely, uh, not make it so complicated. Trying to micro disruptor and storm together when you're not even doing the build proper. Like you're just, again, you're doing the same thing everybody does, which is you're over complicating the game for yourself. If you really want to do it, by all means, go for it. But having both of these units, like you, for instance, earlier when you fought him over here, when you had both Templar and disruptor together, do you know what you accomplished? You accomplished killing your own zealots with disruptor shots. The other, the second disruptor shot almost killed your own stalkers, and your first disruptor shot killed your own zealots as the bio kited you. And the reason why that happened is because you have zero control of your of your gateway units. You have zero control. You have your go select the army a move. Okay, whatever happens happens. And while he kites you away from your units, and you throw disruptors at him. You're never going to have a disruptor catch up to his bio while he's running away with Stimpak. And it's going to hit yourself. And now you have no control of your units because it's not hotkeyed. And you blow yourself up. So, and that wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen if you did have a hotkey for your units. So you could be like, hey, two, throw a disruptor shot at him. One, back up. Like all gateway units, back up. Or vice versa. Hey, one, storm him. Two, engage him with my, all my gateway units. Whatever. You don't need both of these, especially in diamond. Like you can, you can eventually use both of these when you get really confident with your micro. But if you're not, if you're literally in the phase where you're just select alarming your army, you should not be fucking using multicaster. This is not the time to go multicaster, unless you want to make the game extremely hard for yourself. <laughs> it's uh, not worth your time. You're just gonna make you're gonna lose a lot because of that. Blink. Right there. You could have... Why not blink, right? Why Why didn't you blink? Probably because you were like, suck the alarm me. Ah, fuck. I'm hitting feedback. Ah, I can't blink. Because I'm controlling my Templar. And you're like, oh, I got tab, tab. Oh, fuck. I went to the Immortal. Oh, ah, shit. Okay, tab again. Ah, oh, well, the medevacs are gone. You could have literally picked off, like, two medevacs right there. At least one. If you would have just blinked on them. And you could have done that if you actually have any type of control over your gateway units. So stop making it so complicated. Like here's another example. Like why are your stalkers so front, so forward right now? Back the fuck up. You don't want to lose them because you don't want to replace them. These things are expensively shitty. Stalkers are good if you can maintain them. They suck if you trade them. They are actually dog shit units if you keep trading them away and rebuilding them because they're so fucking expensive. You don't want to lose them, so you should not be standing here. And you're losing all of them so that you can do what? Kill one Marauder and one Marine with a Disruptor Shot. You l just lost like 12 Stalkers to kill one Marauder and one Marine because you wanted a Micro Disruptor. And it's because you have no control of your of your Stalkers. What if you had control of your Stalkers and you still shot that Disruptor Shot, but you went, hey, group gateway, back up, Disruptor, take a shot forward. You could still hit the same shot you hit with your Disruptor, 
but all your stalkers would be alive. So then the trade could be, okay, well, I killed one Marauder and one Marine, and I lost nothing. Instead of I lost my whole army to not to hit a shitty ass disruptor shot. And you're not blinking away either. You're, you're like, you're, you're never using your blink ability. And now you recall, but he kills almost everything in the process anyways, because it was like, it was like a panic call. He's like already in your face with Stim and you're recalling in his face and everything dies. And now you're probably just going to die because you don't have any supply. Like you have nothing to fall back on here. And you haven't really been macroing behind this either. Like, where you made another round of stalkers, but you have still, you're trying to spin five bases worth of resources on nine gateways. Each base realistically can maintain about four buildings itself. So you could genuinely maintain 20 fucking production buildings off of this, especially if it's going to be something like zealot based. Because you're mostly gate, you have one robo all gate, which means you're definitely gonna make a lot of zealots here. Like you could honestly have like twenty gates, and your probe count's low too because you didn't really replace probes. And if we were to figure out why that is, my guess is you didn't build any ever since the attack happened, and you, you've been just focusing on trying to use multicaster, and you never even macroed at all while you were attacking. If we went back and looked at that again. Like, look at that right there. Four cannons and two batteries to guard the fourth base, right? You're like, I'm lazy. I don't want to deal with this. And look what the Terran does. This is exactly what I said. He goes, but you got two more cannons here. So realistically, this Terran's dealing with fucking six cannons right now. One medevac that has eight Marines in it. This is 10 supply. <coughs> One medevac is dealing with six cannons and three batteries. This is an investment. Okay, let's let's compare this. This medevac is worth 200 resources. The marines inside of it are worth 400. It's eight marines and each marine is 50, so it's 400. So this medevac in total is worth 600 resources. Okay? That's a 600 resource attack hitting you right there. Your cannon battery is worth six cannons, is uh, 900, plus three batteries is 300 more. You have 1,200 resources. 1,200 resources trying to deal with 600. You have double the investment dealing with half the investment that he has. And he drops you. Your cannons pop a Marine here and there. Like one or two Marines die. He backs up. He hold positions in your middle line. Your whole middle line is still compromised, and these cannons definitely didn't pay for themselves. And you lost every probe, except for the bottom gas, which is the only thing that's actually protected right now. And your Nexus is also going to die to this, it looks like. So this is another reason why I would say... Like, this guy actually, if he doesn't kill the Nexus, it's a, it's a totally a missed opportunity. I mean, he's here too, though, so it doesn't matter. But he totally, he could have focus fired it and killed it. Instead, he's killing all your Stalkers as they warp in. He's actually going to kill all your Stalkers and still win the fight anyways. His Marines literally just killed your whole warp in army too. Because you warped in in his face and he wiped out, like, a bunch of your units as they were warping in. Because here's the thing about... Here's, here's the scary thing about warping in units. People might not know this. Here's the scary thing about warping in units in front of bio, guys, or any unit in the game. When you warp in units in someone's face, when they are warping in, they have zero upgrades. They don't have upgrades. He's got three, three fucking Marines. You have zero, zero zealots going and stalkers going, we're coming in four seconds. Ah. And then by the time four seconds is up, now your shield upgrades and now your armor upgrades kick on and they take effect. But you're, like, fucking dead already. Like, look how many stalkers die when you warp this in. 
You warped in four stalkers already. One's already dead, by the way. Five, six stalkers. So you warped in six stalkers. One already died. And you warped in one zealot so far. And that's it. All these warpins have no armor at all. But as soon as they finish, you actually don't even have armor upgrades, period, as well, by the way. But you don't even have the passive armor, either. That that one armor where it says it says one right there. But it's, it's you have zero upgrades, but it still has one passive. That also doesn't exist when it's warping in. It has no fucking stat increases. It's not. It's like a constructed building. It has nothing. So by the time your warp-in finishes, out of six stalkers and one zealot, you've lost. You're not even fighting eight marines, by the way. You're fighting six. This could be even scarier if there were two more marines here. By the time six stalkers and one zealot warp in, one of your stalkers is already dead. Three of them are no shields. Two of the three are half dead with no shields. And you're just now starting to take the fight. And then you take one volley and you kill one Marine essentially. And you just lost those two stalkers as well. So you've killed two Marines out of six and you've lost three stalkers. And now your Zealot and one of your other stalkers is also out of shields. And then you kill your second Marine and the Zealot's dead, and now it's four stalker or three stalkers versus four marines, one of which has no shields again. Like this warpin sucked. If you would have warped in just like right there, Zealot first, stalkers there, A move forward, blink on the medevac and kill it. You could have been fighting with a battery. You could have also not lost a bunch of stalkers before you're fucking like as the fight as they all die as they warp in. Also, another tip I'll give you, if you're going to do a council-based build, you fucking need a second forge and you need armor upgrades. You This doesn't work if you don't get armor upgrades. You don't actually... Remember that thing I said where you connect to the bio and then you overwhelm the bio with surface area? Where I was like, same supply zealot beats same supply bio. More supply bio beats same the, the same supply zealot at higher ends of supply. That doesn't actually make sense if you have no armor upgrades. If you have no armor upgrades, bio always beats Zealot. If you have same supply or less supply, you just die. Zealots will run in and just be like, bah, 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 bah. Just dead every second. You need armor upgrades. And not shield upgrades, armor upgrades. Because it makes your Zealots fucking tanky. And you're going for a build that is heavy Zealot. At least you should be. This build's a bit fucked, as we talked about already. It's too complicated and it's too many cannons. <clears throat> Anyways, that is why you died this game. I hope it makes sense. I hope what I have told you for this game has been useful information for you to understand. You need to scout more too. You don't scout anything. You definitely gotta scout more, dude. Basically, you gotta adopt the mindset that you need to not be so lazy. Because if you have the mindset where this is your average gameplay and you go, no, oh, fuck playing the game how you're supposed to. I just want to do lazy shit. You might as well uh, download Map Pack right now because that's the only way you're going to get better at this game because you're just going to cheat your way to Masters. <laughs> because your gameplay looks like that of a Map Hacker who doesn't do anything besides sit in his base and just wait. And then eventually you go for a, a counterattack. Like, it, you need to be more active. You have to be more active. You have to understand what's, what the situation of the game is throughout the game through scouting. Whether it be through aggressive scouting or passive scouting, scouting still needs to happen one way or the other. And a, a form of passive scouting is hallucinated phoenixes. A form of aggressive scouting is blink stalkers. You have to scout something at, at multiple points in the game. Like you have to understand the situation. Bunch of dead DTs. Terrible funny. <laughs> crazy stream over. You're crazy. But yeah. Overall, those are all the reasons why you lost uh, this particular game. So I hope what we've talked about definitely uh, makes sense. I hope it helps you. I hope that, you know, there's some tips here that you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that seems logical. Seems like I could fix that or change that or alter that. Um... 
But yeah, uh, I'll tell you this one more time. Here's a big tip one more time. If you're going to do a high zealot build, you can genuinely support four gateways per saturated mineral line nexus. So if you have five bases mining resources, you could honestly have 20 gates pumping zealots constantly. And you need to be aggressive with them and not allow Terran to have a bunch of time to like build up a max supply. Easily. But anyways, guys, much love. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys again in the next one. Um, actually, I'm going to say one more thing because uh, I don't know if you're misunderstanding. Like, If you're going to go Colossus with this, you don't make 20 gateways, just so you know. 20 gateways means you're going to be mining more gas. You're not going pure zealot type shit like I talked about, which is what your build looked like it was designed for because you went for such fast charge and blink. But if you're going to go Robo, Colossus, you don't want 20 gates. You'd probably want like 12 gates there or something because your Robo has an expense as well, right? Like you're going to have more expenses elsewhere. So you're not going to be rolling fucking four gates per nexus. You're going to be rolling probably like two gates per nexus and a Robo or two gates per nexus and an upgrade building. Like, it's a little different how you're going to spend your resources. Also, you have a lot of Nexus that you can throw Chrono Boost into your Robo with. Should you have two Robo? You can have two Robo if you want. You just need to, like, have some more sense of understanding your economy and what your shit's capable of. Because making nine gates on five base Nexus is not enough. Especially since you genuinely made, I think, three Disruptors this entire game and an Observer and one Immortal. That does not justify nine gates. Like, that's very limited robo usage there. You should have had, like, 20 gates this game. And I don't understand how much gas you were mining for how long you were mining, because we talked about with the, with the council, or the Temple Archives. It didn't make any sense. Like, gen genuinely, it made no sense. You made a bunch of gas to make upgrades for Templars and made no Templars. So you stunted your Zealot version of your build to make no Templar. Uh, but yeah, anyways, watch it again. If uh, there's anything else that needs to be recapped, because at this point, everything's going to be recapped. Um, but good, thanks for doing it, Sir Game Board. Much love, man. Appreciate you. And thanks for watching, everybody, who checked it out. Hope it helps you in your own games. Good luck. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, everybody. Bye.